Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix online meeting 112. I thought we were a little bit short of a month, but Bob pointed out that we are a month and three days uh, late. Sorry about that. We had some exciting times at Fire Giant, including shipping a product, and then my kids went back to school, which means everybody starts getting sick. I'm sure you guys know what that means. So a month later, here we are, rolling things. It's going to be a normal day. Moving on right into the agenda, it's going to be a normal thing, mostly triage. We'll do any questions, comments that might have come up over the last month. I think we've been discussing things on the mailing list pretty well, so shouldn't be any surprises. But we do have a few bugs to go through because it has been a little while since we triaged. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded for those people that were unable to make it at this window or got confused at all the moving the meeting times around. Uh, so hopefully <laughs> you'll be able to catch up on this or are catching up on this if you weren't able to make it here today. So I think we're going to roll straight into triage. Bob, you ready? Let's go. All right. So I looked at this. I was like, oh, 15, and one of them's closed. So actually, it's not too bad, all things considered. So let's no, go ahead. Most of them came in like weeks ago. So yeah, well, that's a backlog, not great. but yeah, that's not yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Not a huge number. All right, so this is a feature to use mark dig mark down. Yes, right. We had a discussion about this, I think. Yeah, I, I opened this just because we talked about it and All right. uh, wanted to get the, the you know, open. Uh, a task, I guess, work item open for it. Right. Yeah, very good. So I think I did this on the server side, um, so this should be working there, but I think this is about switching to it in the chum build, right? Uh, yeah, I think we, we want to be consistent. Uh, yeah, ideally, probably, yeah. consistently good. Um, yeah. I'd settle for consistent. Because uh, right now, if you build a chum, you might get a document that looks okay, uh, but does not work on the web, and vice versa. All right, so, so this is a good idea. Do you want this, or you want to send this my way? Um, well, you have all the MarkDig experience. Yeah, the two line change. <laughs> once oh, you get the, well, once you get the thing pulled in, once you get the, the nuget package pulled down, it's just a nuget package. And I'll take it. All right. I'll take it. Shouldn't be a big deal. I've lost my mouse cursor again. Yay! All right, here we go. Bug XML data overwrite some or all of source. Uh, yeah, Visual Studio sure extension. Oh my! Completely wiped a Wix proj in its place was the below. Well, this is the first time we've ever heard of this. So they've done something funky to write their OBJ file somewhere in the wrong place. What the heck is they've done? Visual is that fourteen? That's not Visual Studio. Is that the fourteen? 2015. 2015. All right. I didn't know the Dev 14, right? 2015. Oh. All right. The Visual Studio extension. Get random lines or lines that wipes out part of an XML file. We've never had this, but that is, that does look. It's a Wix obj. That's a or, Wix obj being, or part of a Wix obj? Or maybe a PDB. Could be either. Could be a PDB. Right over the original source files, that's bad. Notice the issue when opening a project and the, oh, and the Wix project is not valid because it was overwritten. Okay. I, this is, yeah, there, we need to send this back for more information. There's, n like, this has never happened, and I don't even know how this happens without doing something really funky. Right. Uh, yes, that is output from the compiler or the linker if it's the PDB. So, I mean, we could tell him that and then tell him he needs to figure out, like, do some investigation into what's writing this. This looks like the component table. No, this is the file table. So we should be able to tell, I think, well, there's 5.12. That's the attributes. This is probably from the compiler because I think it's missing the version information. I don't have my mouse cursor, but... If this is the file, it says it's the file table, which you can see right at the top of the screen there. And then when you look at the top of the screen here, you see there's a couple blank fi fields down a little bit, which means the version and size has not been written. So this right, is probably right, right. the compiler. This is an OBJ file being yep. written to the wrong place. Don't know, not know what he did to do that. 
let's see, set intermediate path or things like that. So we need much more information about what customizations he made to his project file. But there's no way the default should be doing this. No. Never seen this behavior. <laughs> so all right, so we'll send that back for more questions. Feature requests, support MSI transactions. Um, yeah, so we have some discussion going on in Wix devs about this. Uh, we should open this in four, because this is a big change, and we'll take it in four if we end up doing it. I do think we should, I think it would be a good thing to opt in to do it. Yes. It has to be opt-in. It has to be opt-in, yes. Given all the kooky behaviors we've heard of it. So, cool. It's great to see you near doing that. Remove folders doesn't recurse, but returns one. Util does this. Uh, log file, the code, lots of information. All right, so we don't have any. So what? It's it's weird. I mean, I, I looked at the at the code. Um, unfortunately, there's not. Well, it's, it's one of those. It, it doesn't log in cases that you might consider a failure, but that other people might reasonably not consider a failure. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I think we should we should probably take this. Um, you know, I'm willing to take it at least to add logging um, to try to figure out what's going on. The, right. the logging here is not enough to, you know, to to diagnose <laughs> what's going wrong. You you can't you can't intuit the code paths from the logging that we have. So, I would add logging so that we can. Visualize right. the code paths from from that. Uh, is this a Wix four thing? Or are you willing to do the Wix three eleven add logging f to make this more usable? I, At least the logging I will add in. Uh, I'm willing to take in three. All right, all right, okay. Well, What's the bug? I you mean, said a whole lot of you, so I think it's I'm okay. If apparently, you it. oh, we yes. have Sean. All right, now we're gonna give every bug out from here on out to Sean. Um, Excellent. All right. Um, uninstall command should not throw a candle 1136. If you admit those with protocol that complains. Oh, interesting. We actually have something checking for the NetFX protocol. Mm, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I agree. This is kind of, we've come around to the world of, you know, we probably should not be repairing or uninstalling the .NET framework. Um, we can just, we just shouldn't list it, shouldn't be doing it. It's in other people's bundles. It's just it gets its own ARP entry, let it go do that. And apparently we we're trying to prevent people from doing that. So cool. Yeah, I guess we need to go loosen that up. Um are we doing this in four? Um yeah. not the behavior in three? Yeah, yeah. I don't wanna I don't wanna look around. Cool. Let's do that. Using variable in Wix registry search for Win sixty four. Oh, this is an IntelliSense thing? Is that what he's, it's upset about? Yes. Yes, no type union. Cool. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, this is a straightforward four. change. Four. Yeah, put it in four. Call it good. Should do that. Running a bundle with layout quiet when a reboot is pending causes an unprompted reboot. Really? Well, layout's an action. Uh, yeah. Oh, come on, people. Read and delete the others. Delete the others. Uh, at least there's data in here, which is... Oh, he, he filled out both sections twice? Okay. Whatever. Um... It's not unreasonable. It seems like a bug, but it's actually, you know, it's by design in quiet. And how, if the, how did it, the machine get into a restart? You have to get the bundle into a restart state somehow? No, just if your machine requires a reboot. Any reboot? Yeah. The bundle will pick up that something else required a reboot? Sure. Okay. Woo. If if woo you know woo applied something and we check woo for reboot pending right yeah I guess I didn't oh, I didn't think we I didn't think we operate on that I thought we only operated on reboot pending from our own packages not the no. overall state of the machine nope. no nope. We'll, no we'll take not it to the that. beginning 
when when you enter apply, oh, we're checking for oh, the, right, the pending reboot state. Right. Okay. I generally agree with this. Probably should change this behavior in four. Yeah, I agree with Jacob. Layout doesn't need it. It's a special case of applying. Yeah. I assume this is with standard BA. It's not burn, right? Or I guess burn could do it. Yeah, burn should probably do it. Mm, I think it's. Oh, actually, that's a good question, isn't it? Burn wouldn't trigger the reboot, but Wix standard BA would. Yeah, but Burn may have said you needed one, so it probably shouldn't. I, I don't think the engines would say, "Hey, you need a reboot," it during a layout action. It's, it's just um, yeah, yeah, okay. And then the BA could still say, "Hey, I, I'm choosing to do a reboot after quiet because right, the user hit right. the restart button in my UI." I don't know, but Burn would be like, "All right, fine. I didn't need one, but you said you needed one. We're restarting." So. Yeah. That's probably the way it should go. All right, cool. Engine should be taught a little bit more. Customize prereq BA reboot prompt message dialog text. Yeah, we don't really. This is the one where we where we we get the, the error. Yeah, we get the system text for a known error, and then right. prompt for OK or cancel. Yeah, all right, cool. Let's toss it in the suspend in 4.0, and if someone wants to do it in 4.0, they can go about trying to figure out a good way of doing all the localization and all that. Well, we actually, we we localize the prereq BA. Mm, it's fine. I, I'm, but yeah, sure. If I have someone wants to do the work to localize this yeah. message. I think the system message is fine. I mean, this is what Windows install always shows you we're doing in basic mode, so, you know, whatever. And it actually wants to change the OK button, so they want to use a custom dialog. Well, it, again, it goes back. There, there's no question, right? So yes and no are wrong, um, but the message is not very. It, there's nothing that says click OK to reboot or do you want it to reboot? Yes, no. Retry it's, it's not. It's oh. not. Yeah, right. Whatever. <laughs> A port retry ignore. <laughs> yeah. Yes, you figure out what three buttons mean. <laughs> The retry just brings up the box again. Right, let's be real clear. Yeah, right. <laughs> Let me retry showing the, the dialog. Abort doesn't do the reboot, and ignore means it ignores the reboot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, whatever. This is the system thing, so yeah. And there's no reboot now button in the message box, so you need a whole custom message box for this to work. So That's a separate issue, yes. No, it's part of this. If they want to, uh, they want to localize the reboot. Sorry, no. I, uh, I'm. It's separate in my mind. Uh, I'm. I'm pointing. I'm. I'm just liking the the text of the message. Oh, oh Because oh. it's an error message um, that doesn't. You know, have, there, there's no direction. There's no. You know. Um, Press OK. Whole, to restart now. Okay, fine. Yeah. Whatever. Whatever. I'm. I'm. All right. I'm fine if it, it's a so a standard message box. Yeah. It goes in four. And if you're saying you don't want to resolve as math, then fine. We can put it in four and four X. I guess. Yeah. Someone can fix it. Oh, yeah, actually, that's a good point. It does not need to be 4 up. No. Which is the correct license? Most files in 3.11. Source VSS. Yeah, that's the VSSDK. Right. But someone added the MSRL license comment to the top of those files. So it starts with MSRL and then is followed by an MSPL. Oh, that's really weird. Yes. Whoever added that comment should be very disappointed in him or herself. I see. How about we remove that and fix this doing that? Yeah. Yeah. In 311. That'd be great. Undo yep. overzealous licensing. That works. And since I'm such a polite person, I'll take that. That sounds great. Yeah. Heat tool to harvest reg should provide option to skip escape characters and registry values. To escape. Ah, wow, cool. A feature request that doesn't follow the feature template. Again, uh, you know what? We're just going to start closing bugs that do not. Uh, if we, we added the template for a reason, people right. should follow it. Yeah, we're going to start closing bugs that said, you know, <laughs> fix your template, edit the bug, and then we'll come back to this. So, all right. Anyway, um, yeah, fine. We can do this in four. Someone could do heat. So, 4x. They want to add more functionality to. Fire uh, to heat, they can do that. Although, Three. if you have a rich file, why is it 
suddenly custom, I don't care. <laughs> Just okay. If someone wants to do it, they can deal with rich files. 3x documentation is missing a diagram. This, I'm sure, is a difference between where this diagram lives on the, yeah, in the images. Yeah, it's in the wrong place for the site. All right, so we need to move this file around a little bit to get in the right place. It's probably some relative path that's in a different place in the chum than it is on the web, so we just have to get in the right place in the web. Although someone's saying it's, oh. What? I, that's some backup thing. Like, they went and found someone created a copy of it or it's in a Wayback Machine or something. Well, sorry, I'm I'm wondering. Because it contains errors, is that, are they trying to say that it, the ping is damaged? Oh, maybe. But it's not, I, I thought it was there because it wasn't there at all. But maybe it is damaged. And oh. It got messed up in a, a Git conversion somewhere. We haven't noticed right. that. Right. I, don't know. Or, I think that's what they're saying. All right. Because I, I get the same message. All right, cool. Well, that's even easier. We just have to fix the image. Great. Yeah. Why don't you give this to me? I have a couple things I'm going to do on the website soon. I'm finally getting around to that now that I've got all my other stuff under control. For okay. Steps. I got tiny site all fixed up, so whatever. Anyway, so I will do a few things on web soon. Webroot finds this license, so someone is having some false checks on our 310. Because you ran this against another defender. Yeah. All right. So, what is this? I've never heard of this thing before. Me either. Secure anywhere? I wouldn't have thought that antivirus was a growth industry. Yeah. Um, fine. So, I don't know what we do with this. Um, Why don't you give this to me, and I'm going to try to submit a a whitelist thing, because that's the best way to solve these, is to... Yeah. Sum, I've, okay. I've submitted all the Wix stuff to the whitelist thus far, and it fixed a lot of crazy problems. Actually, that's a good point. Why don't we have them, because I don't even know who this is. Why don't we resolve this, send it back to them, and say, hey, submit this back to your vendor and have them double-check it, because we think it's fine. Whatever the hell this is. Secure anywhere. Okay. No, I'll do it. I'll do it. They're, they're not going to do it. I'll do it. Just give it to me. Just give me too much trouble. Okay. They won't do it. I'm not going to. I'm not going to say anything until we we move on. Yeah. No. Just just give it to okay. me. Okay. Do it. I, I I submitted it to, you know, Semantic and Kaspersky and a bunch of others before. So. Is this? We should maybe be automating this with every official no, release. It's just a pattern. They just need to see the burn pattern. Once they see it, it goes away. I just had to submit. Yeah. I literally submitted just the Wix, signed Wix bundles once, and. All the questions stopped happening. It's like, oh, right, man. interesting. Yeah, just send it to your vendors and going here. This is not a vi this is not a virus, and then they go and look at it and like, oh yeah, and they fix their signatures and it's done. So, yeah. Anyway, no, it's fine. We just need to go send it to this one. The best way to head this off is to submit it to that vendor, and if that vendor is at all reputable, they'll figure out the pattern and they'll fix it. If they're not reputable, then we'll we'll just keep seeing them going. Yeah, these guys suck and stop. So I don't know which it is. <laughs> stop using them. Go use a real tool. It's really what it comes down to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, like I said, you know, go look at them. We'll submit it once. That's enough. Another person that... What ha why is it people stop delete? Uh, whatever. Um, yeah, I already asked for more details because they didn't follow the templates. Um, there's been no reply in a week. I say we... Do it yeah, one more week. And no, no, let's just close. They didn't follow the template. My, my, my patience with this is even less. We're going to close it as no response, and we'll leave it leave it un, unlabeled, and we'll label it next week. Ah, nice. Because I like the it. idea of a no response label. Yes. I like that. Yeah, so, all right. Or no repro, I guess. Yeah, whatever. So, that works. Yeah, not a bug, I think, is what we have. All right, uh, V6 package. They're doing all of this. You're building with 3.8, which didn't support VS 2015. Cheapers. Yeah. Fine. So this is not a bug. Go upgrade Wix. All right. Give that a label. It will go away. Um, provider key to Wix core MSI results in a build failure. Oh, well, that's not good. This is 
this in Wix 4? Yeah, okay, cool. Let's toss this in Wix 4 and assign it to Sean for now. <laughs> no, let's just he, put it in Wix 4. Well, no, he actually, there's a pull request for it. Oh, is there already? It, right. it, well, it's it's interesting, actually. Um, I'm, I'm a little uncertain about the fix, but I think it's right. It's one of those, it doesn't look like it could possibly, possibly work, but. All right, well, fine. Let's give it to him and toss it four. Yep. And oh, what is that, extensions? Last one, theme util should support tool tips. I generally agree with that. Oh, Bob, yes. <laughs> like We were discussing this not too long. Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, we should do this. Probably a four thing, though, right? It is All definitely a four thing. All of our changes in four, I think this would be a great thing to do in themes. Are you going to take it in four? I am taking it in four. Sweet. We'll get a new feature in Theme Util. Yet another cool feature in Theme Util 4, which is actually yep. going to be a pretty dang cool thing. Everyone cool. likes Theme Util. Oh, yeah, well, awesome. not everyone, but I do. All right. That's triage. It took about as long as I figured it would. Anything else we want to talk about today? Questions, comments, other things going on? We just have Jacob at this point. Sean has bailed on us, and... It's a quiet week. That's what I get for messing with the dates multiple times in a row and all that. So thank you for showing up, Jacob. Sorry for moving the thing around. But life is getting more back to normal. School schedules getting sorted out. People on the edges of being sick. <laughs> Fire giants shipped. <laughs> now it's back to normal crazy instead of crazy crazy. Mm, normal crazy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty what's that. All right, cool. Still under a 30-minute meeting after a month. That's not bad. I still want to do these every two weeks, not every month. Every month feels like too long. Good call. Um, um, uh, yeah, that's a good point, Jacob. It might be better than where we skip a week and offset. Cause I, just, I, have a, I have a reminder set up for every occurring two every two weeks, and when we... When we you know skip one week, then it it throws off the the recurrence. It, it, yeah, I I'm I'm kind of in favor of that. If we need to skip a week, we should skip until the next scheduled meeting. All right. I'm. Is that what you're suggesting? That's what you're suggesting, right, Jacob? Just to make sure. Yeah, offset messes mine as well. All right. All right. So people are. Well, so this was actually on schedule, right? Because we. Skipped. I think it would have been. Yeah. But this is this is our regular scheduled week, uh, for. A month later. So basically, says if we miss a week, we're going to do it a month, and then we'll just have to make sure that we don't miss again, kind of thing. Um, yeah, last week. Same thing. If there were anything cool starting in that, list of that, yeah. The critical stuff we could take care of on the mailing list. And we've been doing that, right? The feature yeah, yeah. request on the mailing, you know, we've been moving that forward, so. I have two meetings scheduled now. Okay, I don't know. Can't help you being in two places at one time. That's, that's a very hard problem. I've not solved that one yet. I'm going to go back and watch Primer, though. Apparently they haven't solved that movie. Um, good movie, by the way, if you haven't seen it. Low-budget indie film. It's actually really good. Um, all right. Um, and it just showed up on Netflix, I saw. That's the only reason it came up. Or at least Netflix recommended it to me. I'm like, yeah, I watched that a long time ago. All right, I'm drifting, clearly. Uh, if we don't have anything else going on, I think we'll call this meeting done. Um, I think we're going to get a little bit more hardcore about just closing issues that don't use the template. I'm getting a little annoyed by this. Um, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little annoyed when we ask for... I mean, I understand templates can be annoying, but I think the one we have is pretty minimal. Uh, yeah. And well, it asks for important information. I mean, yeah. people who, who, you know, delete the template and then don't include things like version numbers. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I don't have a lot of sympathy for that. Yeah. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful two weeks. Until next time, we'll see you around on the mailing list. Oh, Jacob's still typing. Say something important, Jacob, or don't, because then we can all go home. Any sound bite on the new Fire Giant extension? So the new Fire Giant extension is a, a product that we just put together um, to wrap up a number of things that we've been working on over the last uh, I don't know, couple of years kind of thing. And the big, you know, feature that we got to that finally said, yeah, you know, there's enough functionality in here to release it is the AppX extension, which is functionality that we've added 
to create AppX packages from your uh, source code authoring. The idea being that maybe you want to get in the Microsoft Store on Windows 10, you have an application um, that you've been installing on you know, Windows 7, Windows Vista, maybe Windows XP forever. And so you're like, cool, I want to get in the store. They have a way of doing that with a desktop bridge, but you also want to ship for Windows 7 because you still have lots of customers there. You can get this extension from Fire Giant and with a line of code that adds a couple pieces of information that AppX packages need, that MSI packages do not. And poof, the extension will now, for every build, build an MSI, also build an AppX package that you can then uh, ship up to the store. Um, it's it's a, the whole integrated system. We've also inter um, introduced something that we were working on for a long time that um, is a better harvesting, what we believe is a better way of doing harvesting. It's a completely different approach than what Heat takes it. Um, and so we've, we've released that as part of this. Those two are the big features that come out of it. Um, Bob would probably talk about the FGBA wrapper that we provide, which is a uh, FireGiant bootstrap application layer, which reduces the amount of code you have to write in a native uh, UI. It's currently native. We'll look at doing a managed version in the future, but we do a lot of work for customers that want to have native bootstrap applications um, because they don't want the dependency on .NET framework. Um, and so we've written enough to help us, things that make it easier to write UIs on top of it. We also have a specialized driver extension in there that we did. So if you don't like using Diffix app for your filter system drivers and other low-level drivers, uh, we have an extension that does all the install, repair, rollback things in a much better way than Diffix app does. It does not support plug-and-play drivers. So if you have plug-and-play driver, Diffix app is still the best solution there, but the Vix app is way overkill for the other things. And we have a number of our customers were installing the low-level drivers and not needing all the plug-and-play and having lots of problems with the Vix app. So the big features inside the Wix expansion pack, which is what we called it, we thought it was a nice name um, from Fire Giant, is a the primary thing that people have been finding interest in is the AppX, which is why we decided now is a good time to launch the Wix expansion pack. Um, the harvesting is, uh, we think, is pretty cool. Um, especially if you've been frustrated with heat um, and the pain that you go through dealing with it. Um, and then FGBA is neat uh, if you want a native BA. Probably more interesting to people that want managed BAs in the future. Just handles a lot of heavy lifting. And then the driver extension is the other thing that's in there. If you have a file system level driver, it's a much better way of installing drivers. Um, and it, you know, it now gives us a product that we have on our site you know, that we can sell that we use as we do other development inside um, Fire Giant that we believe is... Uh, adds enough value to Fire Giant that we don't feel like, you know, we'll just contribute straight to the Wix tool set. Because we do a lot to contribute straight to the Wix tool set, all these, you know, enhancements to burn and the core tool set and things like that. Um, we'll continue to do those things. But some things we want to, you know, try to build a business in Fire Giant so that we can continue to do all of these things around Wix as well. Uh, we'll continue to add things um, in the Wix expansion pack as we find them. So it's kind of a, it was, it was a, a neat thing to do. We're still kind of recovering from the release of it um, which is why we haven't talked a lot about because we just piggybacked on the Microsoft announcement of AppX. They sent us a number, a bunch of traffic through their websites and all their launches and stuff like that, which is great. Um, and so we've been done this nice quiet launch for um, the Fire Giant Wix expansion pack. Um, so that. And the other thing is that a lot of our support customers were already in the program, had already seen a number of these extensions because we made this available to our support customers. So the big change, I guess, was the the product release and the ability to get the Wix expansion pack without having a support contract if that's what you wanted. So um, that's kind of the blurb of what we're offering up now. Um, and we'll see where it goes from here. All right, on that little bit of advertising, I think we're going to call this a, a week uh, or a month at this point. Um, in two weeks, we'll be back. Hopefully, get everything back to normal. I think we're going to be talking about the uh, transaction thing. Hopefully, we get some more discussion and progress on that. Um, and uh, until next week, you guys take it easy. Bye. Bye. Bye.